Oh, hello. I suppose this is a good time to give you a warm welcome to the late spring local history programme and we'll include some early summer as well. No guests this month, so you're stuck with me. So this time I've decided to go a bit anoraki and I'm going to feature Huddersfield's tram fleet over the 20th century. Sadly, we've only discovered one five-minute bit of very worn film. The subject is the first tram from town centre to Brighouse, and this coincided with the opening of a new cinema, which, for the first performance, was free for children. Being from 1908, there was a glut of civic dignitaries, so guess how much of the five-minute film was dedicated to the tram and the children? You can count for yourself, it won't take you more than 30 seconds. At this point, we've stopped the film because, yes, as I said, there's a flurry of very pompous dignitaries who no one will remember now. So let's go straight to the children. They were waiting for a free film show as part of their tram celebrations. you get a wonderful insight into the behaviour of kids there. That's if you study it. And they're not much different to today's kids of that age anyway. As you may anticipate, apart from yours truly, this is a very black and white programme. We couldn't get permission to show any colour film cursors. Having seen colourised photographs, it would seem, apart from the steam tram engines, the livery was pale cream where you see white and a sort of burgundy where you can see black. A bit like the Yorkshire Woolen District livery for buses in the 1950s. I'm starting with steam trams as any pictures of horses tend to be etched rather than photographic and don't come out well. In this late 1880s view of engine number nine, a black Hawthorne built loco, hauling a Starbuck, no, not them, body, open top and seating 34, which started life being horse drawn but it has been rebuilt with two four-wheel bogies in place of the usual one bogey and four wheels when Dobbin, if you know what I mean, used to pull them. This is at Lockwood Bar. Trams of that time didn't have roller blinds. If you look closely, there are two wooden indicators on the third and fourth windows. Lockwood is shown, so because of that, we can't correctly say where the tram is destined for. This is the later standard combination with the top deck now not exposed to the elements. The engine is a Kitson which was built in Leeds and this trailer, a Milner manufactured bogey, uh, taken at Birkby near to the Spains Road. 
This combo worked a circular route from town centre along Bradford Road, returning via Berkeley through the town to Lockwood. Notice how much more advertising there is, all helping the council to fund travel. This route wasn't popular though, and even at peak times there was only one service every 30 minutes. On to the electrics now, and this is Open Top Car 35 giving assistance to Car 26 after it was derailed at the bottom of Newsham Road following a runaway incident. 26 was a car built by Milnes and was out of service for several months, having its roof replaced. 35 was a British electric car build. See how many people it's attracted to the incident. There were lots of nosy folk in those days, you know. At last, upstairs travellers could avoid getting soaked in the bad weather. The first attempts at top deck coverage resulted in a much smaller seating area as the spiral steps made it impossible to enclose the front and back and entry still needed to be made via the platform. Car 44 was of BEC manufacturer and now had a roller destination blind front and back but retained the wooden boards in the middle lower deck windows. Other snippets, the advertisement for Nevisons is still current because the business still continues to trade from premises in Byron Street. Car 44 had a very short life, being withdrawn in 1925. Why, we don't know, but possible due to accident damage. The first attempts at full-length top decks produced, well, not the prettiest cars ever designed. Built by United Electric Car Company to the design of Huddersfield Tram's own general manager, R. H. Wilkinson. Car 30 at John William Street in 1933 shows its rather garden shed looking vestibule complete with side door open on a rush hour trip to Deaton. Better looking was car 68, rebuilt at Great Northern Street Works in 1912 following the design of newly delivered English electric cars, but it kept its original spiral staircases permanently open to the boarding and exit areas. Don't know about you, but the tram bodies at this time were starting to look like the trams that I knew when I was a lad, and that's saying something, isn't it? Fully enclosed cars were now the norm, but look at the queue in Northumberland Street. It's match day and a terrier's home game. This was the picking up point not the Dugdale Brothers sign on the wall, a company still trading and flourishing in that same building, as you may have seen on a recent history programme. And if you look to the bottom of the street, well, you can see the buildings that were incorporated into the media centre, which now is the home of KLTV, and that's where I am right now. Now, you notice there's no pushing or shoving to get on, as there were never less than two cars waiting to pick up and the frequency was measured in minutes. Notice though, there's an inspector eyeing the crowd just in case there's trouble. This is a post-publicity picture of one of the last eight cars to join the Huddersfield fleet. The first of them is car 137. All were built by English Electric and in the new livery of Post Office Red and Cream, they're seating for 58, would you believe? All upholstered, trucks made by Maley and Taunton to what they called a swing link design. They got air brakes, closing doors, and were much faster than the regular cars. And because of this, they were used exclusively on the Marsden to Bradley route. That's because, of course, if the other trams were on, they would catch up with them and they'd be a right old mess. Yes, the destination blind does say Sheepridge, I know, but it is a publicity shot and sadly they did not last very long but had another life after 1938 when the Marsden to Bradley services were transferred to trolleybuses, the tramcars were sold to Sunderland Corporation and that was about the end of it. The last tram ran ignominiously from Northumberland Street to Brig House in the dark in June 1940. It was of course blackout. It was car 132 which without any fuss or ceremony ran through the blackout of the Second World War ending 57 years of Huddersfield Corporation trams. And that was about it. No celebration, nobody on the tram. It just whimpered out.
or did it? Huddersfield Corporation was nothing if not thrifty and it devised a way to make more profit from trams. Kill the coal wagons! Hard to believe, but this is actually a tram. In 1904, some bright spark, I'm sorry about that, there's no pun intended, devised a coal route for the industry. Built by G.C. Milne's Vossen Company and originally numbered 71 and 72, the tram department started a dedicated delivery service to mills on the outlaying route. They had the appearance of open railway wagons, but of course with a pickup pole and two driving positions, which, to all who I've talked to about it, were extremely cramped and very, very uncomfortable to work in. They had special tracks onto the mill yards and could carry up to 10 imperial tons at a time. Here's car 72, later to be renumbered 2. The coal was loaded at Hillhouse Railway Yard from drop chutes. It then proceeded on a dedicated track along Bradford Road and Whitestone Lane, then crossing Alder Street into the tram depot. And from there, on to final delivery. And so, to the last photograph. This is one of the tram trucks unloading at a mill on the outlaying route. Which mill is not recorded? This enterprising venture came to an end in 1934 as, yes, you've probably guessed, trolleybuses took over this route. Interesting footnote, I hope you think. And I hope you've enjoyed our walk down memory lane. Well, actually, it isn't memory lane at all, is it? It's memory tracks. We'll be back with the late summer edition soon. This is Dave Hodgson on behalf of producer Barry Davenport and the entire KLTV crew. Don't forget your Factor 25 until the next one. Take care and bye for now. Mm -hmm.